Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in crypto and bring them out of bite-sized pieces. So today, just like the thumbnail suggests, we're going to take a look at the validity of the digital dollar. And is it really all you need as far as CBDCs as compared to cryptocurrencies? And the way we're going to do that is take a look at what's going on in the current market and some current news events. So first up, Fed Chair Jerome Powell says you wouldn't need cryptos if you had a digital US currency. So we're gonna look for the truthfulness of what he's talking about and how it compares to crypto and how it really actually is different from the digital dollar. And uh, since there are no coincidences, at the same time, the IMF, World Bank, BIS recommend countries work together on CBDCs to enhance cross-border payments. And uh, this couldn't come at a better time as China reveals a digital yuan white paper. As they say, they're going to also have smart contracts. There has been billions already settled and large transfers are traced, but the small ones aren't because you can always trust China. So we'll take a look at what's going on there. And then I'm going to wrap it up with what Brad Garlinghouse said at the Economic Club of New York in 2019. And this is really going to play into what CBDCs are, uh, how it actually pertains to the, the current situation, and really, is it really necessary for what we're talking about? And then uh, finally, just to make mention of, uh, we're going to do a prediction evaluation live video with uh, Guy from Coin Bureau and Crazy for Cryptos, and we'll talk about that at the very end. But first, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today, it is Sunday, it is uh, July 18th, and uh, it's pretty much the same. Uh, we're just moving sideways. I you know, July, we've always uh, thought that July wasn't going to be a great month and uh, it did not disappoint. And here we are moving sideways. So I'm just happy that Bitcoin has uh, uh, remained in within that thirty to $40,000 range. There was a little bit of a 20000 That's okay. So today, Bitcoin price is 31724 This is Trade the Chain. It looks a little bit different right now because I have it on a, on a condensed view. Let's take a look at some coins real quick and see where we actually are at as far as uh, prices. So uh, Ethereum really did break down. It went below 2000 and now it's dropped to 1904. And, but within 24 hours, it hasn't really changed too much. Tether, nobody cares. Binance coin, Cardano up 0.52, watch out. XRP down 0.48, watch out again. Yeah, you know, it doesn't matter. Nothing's really going big. Dogecoin is down 6%, 7% because of that car salesman tweet, Ugh, whatever. And uh, that's the big stuff. Really, it's just sideways action. Uh, if you're a big trader, I'm not. Uh, let's just use what Trade the Chain's designed for, sentiment analysis. So I'm going to click on that one hour projected range. Let's see what we got here. Wow. So between negative 1% and plus 16% with 90% assurance, this is what Trade the Chain is telling us. Take a look at Fusion. Take a look at Seller Network, DeFi.Money, Ocean Protocol, Electronium, Amp. And those are just ranging in the, man, 18%, 4%, 6%. And uh, yeah, if you're looking for Trade the Chain, links in the description. But let's just, uh, let's break into today's top story where we talk about the digital dollar <laughs> is all you need. This ought to be good. So what's going on here? Well, uh, during the hearing, which was just this week, Representative Stephen Lynch from Massachusetts, Massachusetts asked if a swift action First of all, the Fed doesn't do anything swift except drop a ton of money from the helicopters. Uh, if a swift action on the Fed's digital currency would calm the markets and whether a digital dollar would be more viable alternative than having thousands of cryptos or stable coins. Pretty good question, actually, if you think about it. And uh, Jerome Powell says, I think that could be the case. Uh, in particular, you wouldn't need stable coins. You would need cryptocurrencies if you had a digital U.S. currency, I think. That's one of the stronger arguments in its favor. And before I go on, uh, just to make mention of this, uh, I can't let that pass without talking about it. Look, the re there is no difference between, and Brad's going to talk about this later. I'm not, I don't want to steal his thunder. But the reason between uh, the digital dollar, the CBDCs, and a cryptocurrency is that there really is no difference between the digital dollar, CBDCs, that's the same thing, and a crypto. There is no limit on how much they can print as far as the dollar. So even if you digitize it, which it's digitized anyhow, what's the difference? It's just a difference in the, the wallet. And I'll explain that, that later. But really, there is no difference in that. And you can just keep printing things to infinity. So it's the same thing. There's same uh, inflation. There's the same problem. And this is what cryptocurrencies, they limit uh, the actual tokens to the, to the amount of whatever it's set at. Bitcoin's 21 million. That's a very famous one. So if we take a look at this, like there is a big difference. And Jerome is not stupid. And I know he knows this, but when he's talking to somebody uh, in Congress 
He's probably just blowing over it and just blowing smoke and gaslighting going, same thing. It's no big deal. And that's how things get done. You just kind of roll over and steamroll people and don't really get into the into the thick of it. And that's one of the problems I see here. Uh, I could be wrong. Let me know in the comment section. Maybe Jerome has no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> this ought to be great in the comments, but uh, let's move on. So uh, to finish this up, Representative Lynch also raised concerns about the slowness of digital dollar development. Whew citing that many central banks worldwide are progressing faster than the U.S. in this area. Look, the digital yuan, uh, they've already come through and said, we've already processed billions of transactions. And guess what? We've got 20 million wallets out there. Beat that. Powell replied, I think this is the beginning of an accelerating decision process. Wow. You've accelerated the decision process. That's good. We have a lot of work left to do on the technical side and on the policy side, but a critical part of it is just public consultation. I'm really concerned about getting this right. I think it's way more important to get it right than it is to get it fast. And I got to tell you, there is one thing I will say about this, and that is as an entrepreneur, I just try to stick things, just throw things at the wall and see what sticks. And I can kind of understand what, Paul, what Powell here is saying. And I will say one more thing, and that is that uh, for those of us who remember history, uh, we weren't the first ones in space. It was Russia. Russia beat the pants off us. And uh, we rallied together as a nation, said, we're going to put somebody on the moon. And we did it. And we did it first. Go America. America. So I wonder if this is going to be one of those lights, light under the fire or light under the pants type of situation where we're like, look, we're getting crushed over here by different countries, China being one of them. Maybe it's time to put our foot on the gas and really start to do these CBDCs if this is what it is. But in all honesty, um, Congress and the Fed and all those things, it's, it's not their job to innovate. That's not their job. Their job is to regulate. So I don't know why they're even like really talking about this. I do think that there is a, a good play for, I mean, we just talked about why it's not any different than, than the, the digital dollar. But what I do see a difference is, is how they're going to use oracles for smart contracts. And I'll get into that in a bit. So anyhow, to finish this up, uh, the Fed chair also addressed concerns about the U.S. losing its reserve currency status. And he states, there really isn't a good competitor out there. All the things you need to be uh, a reserve currency the United States has, we're not in danger of losing it. And certainly not to China. So We'll see how right he is, and uh, we'll go from there. I can speculate, and I can talk all day long, but it really comes down to execution, and uh, we'll see it all works out. But really, in all honesty, if you take a look at uh, innovation, how fast things move, time to step up, because if not, we're going to get passed by. Anyhow, let me know what you think about this in the comments section, and uh, let's talk about the IMF uh, finally going, you know, we should really work together. So this one was kind of funny, and it's really hilarious, the very last statement. But... Uh, there was a committee on payments and market infrastructures, the BIS Innovation Hub, International Monetary Fund, and the World Bank published a joint report on the G20 on July 9th titled Central Bank Digital Currencies for Cross-Border Payments. The report explained that cross-border payments are commonly criticized for their high cost, low speed, limited access, and insufficient transparency. And it's pretty amazing that we still have it so expensive in today's world. Look, I can send an email to anybody instantly uh, what's the difference between sending money uh, across across borders? What it is is that we are hampered by SWIFT, which was a company uh, created back in the 60s to transfer money across border. And of course, banks, here's the thing. Banks don't trust each other. Guess what? Countries don't trust each other. So for all these different banks within the network, if you want to transfer, uh, I don't know, the, the pound across, right? You have to have dollars and pounds in that bank if you are a bank. If you want to transfer the bot. If you want to transfer any type of different currency, you have to have that currency plus your currency in that bank across the pond. Uh, you know why? Because banks don't trust each other. We don't even trust banks, so why should they trust each other? And then on top of that, we know countries are kind of like, I don't trust that one. So when we when we see about here, that's the whole thing that SWIFT eliminated because they said, well, we'll just do it like this. It, it's a it's not even a, a transfer service. It's a telecommunication service. It's a it's a text messaging service. That's really what it comes down to. So this is an old technology and it's still around. That's the kind of power the banks have. Hopefully they lose a little bit out of it. Anyhow, to finish this up, various aspects of central bank digital currencies were analyzed and it came out of this. The analysis highlights both the need for multilateral collaboration on macro financial consequences, as well as the importance of interoperability between CBDCs. The main conclusion of the, of the report said this, 
try not to laugh out loud. Central bank digital currencies have the potential to enhance the efficiency of cross-border payments. True. As long as the countries work together. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. Some countries do like each other. I mean, we have a great relationship with Canada, pretty good with Mexico, EU, different places, right? But as far as like countries all working together, are you out of your mind? No way. So the, I don't see this actually working. I don't see this actually coming to, to, to pass. I think there's going to be roadblocks because like, well, they can say, well, you can, you know, uh, go from America to Canada and, you know, transfer, you know, any kind of uh, uh, service or like dollar to, 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 to francs in, in France. But uh, if you want to go to like Russia or, or China or something like that, yeah, good luck. So we don't trust each other. And that's really what it comes down to. Let me know how, if there's a way to uh, alleviate that. I just don't see this really working too well unless you have an intermediary type of crypto and I'll leave that up to you. So there is that piece. Now let's go on to one of the more important things, I think, the digital yuan. So this is what's going on. Chinese digital yuan is no different than the physical renminbi. I always say that wrong. Correct me in the comments. I'm sure you will. I don't really care. But the thing is like, and people will ask, well, what's the difference between, between the digital yuan and the, and the renminbi? It's, it's almost the same thing. It's a subtle difference, right? So like the U.S. dollar, we don't, in America, we don't call the U.S. dollar the Federal Reserve note. We just say the U.S. dollar. So the digital yuan, they don't call it the uh, uh, People's Bank of China, you know, note or whatever else it is. It's this, the renminbi. So people just call it the digital, the, the yuan, the, the yuan as far as like the money part or the coin part. There's different names for that. But anyhow, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. But to get to the point, the People's Bank of China's Digital Currency Working Group stresses that the digital yuan often referred to as the ECNY. And this is an a acronym we're going to have to get used to, ECNY, ECNY, that's digital yuan, is no different than the physical form of money used by the Chinese today. And it's the same thing we talked about as far as the digital dollar. There's no difference. It's just zeros and ones. But it's the same thing. It's the same thing. The only difference is the wallet. I'll get to that in a second. The issuance and circulation of ECNY is identical with physical renminbi, while the value of the former is transferred in a digital form, zeros and ones. The paper claims, and this was the white paper, that more than 20 million digital yuan wallets have been created thus far, which I guess is pretty good, but you gotta remember China's like about a billion plus people, so sure. And 5.4 billion or 35 billion yuan has been set on the ECNY network, which I guess, again, is pretty good because it's just they just rolled it out not too long ago. The progress report notes that uh, the digital yuan protocol has built-in programmability. This is the big thing. Eludes, and that alludes to the use of smart contracts. It doesn't say smart contracts, but it alludes to the fact that smart contracts and decision-based transaction. The ECNY obtains programmability from deploying smart contracts that don't impair its monetary functions under the premise of security and compliance. This feature enables self-executing payments according to predefined conditions or terms agreed between two sides. So here's the thing about smart contracts uh, as far as like finance and, and those types of things. So let's make a, make a simple assessment here. Let's say that you wanna buy a house, okay. You have to go to the mortgage company, right? And they have to approve you because they have to take a look at your credit score, your work history. They have to take a look at your bank accounts. They have to look at a different, uh, couple different things. They have to take a look at if, if there's a lien on the houses, make sure that uh, that's all in the up and up and everything's you know pretty good to go. So to do all those things, that's a lot of middle men, middle women, whatever you wanna call it. And uh, that's cost all the way along those little, little uh, points, right? Well, what if you didn't need those people and it could just be done automatically? Some type of thing called an Oracle, right? And it pulls in all this data from outside in the actual real world and puts it into the actual blockchain because blockchain can't do that. That's why we need oracles. So if you can do something like that where it could go to the IRS and say, hey, is there any, uh, any kind of judgments against this person or, do, or do they, are they on the up and up with their taxes? And it goes to uh, you know, your credit score, Experian and all the, diff all the other, the, both the other ones that escape me right now. And they say, what's the credit score? 740, sounds pretty good. IRS, okay, you're pretty good. And also we can take a look at your employment history. Looks like you made X amount of dollars. And then also we can uh, integrate with your bank and it's instantaneous and it gives us all the information. And it doesn't really do anything. I mean, as far as like a middle person and boom, it says approved. The money goes from your bank into their account. It pays for it, it sets it all up. That's essentially like a great smart contract, right? So when it talks about this, how's it gonna do that? How's it gonna do those types of things 
just because it has a digital UI. There's a lot of different protocols that come into place. And on, on top of that, all the different hacks that, that could potentially come in. So when we see something like this, and that's just one example, right? We want to see something like this. Maybe the whole thing isn't so much about the cryptocurrency and the digital dollar. Let's say that the America does go through with this and they do say, let's do the digital dollar and actually make, get it through, which I think they're actually going to do it. What happens with the smart contracts? Is it their job to innovate or to regulate? It's not their job to make these different products. That's the whole point of the free market system. So if you're looking for things to get into for us, cryptocurrency, maybe a smart contract play is in your best interest. Now, again, on this channel, this is uh, investment opinion, not investment advice, but just something that kind of just came up to me. And I'm like, wow, this could be one of those things where we're going to need an Oracle service. We're going to need some smart contract functionality. And there's a lot of different ones that can actually do that. Which one will win? Will it be Ethereum? Will it be Tezos? Will it be Cardano? Will it be Avalanche? Who knows? Maybe there's one for everyone, but uh, or every different aspect. But I think this is the interesting thing. And for them to say that it's just going to be like an easy type of deal, I don't think it's that easy. And I think that's why they are China, working with a lot of different private industries in China, which is kind of weird because they're still not China. They're still not private. And bringing smart contract functionality. We will see. Anyhow, to finish this up, and this is the, the laughable part, anonymity for small value and traceable for high value. The ECNY follows the principle of anonymity for small value and traceable high value and attaches great importance to protecting personal information and privacy. It aims to meet the public demand for anonymous small value payment service based on the risk features and information processing logic of the current electronic payment system. I will let you comment below if you think that uh, China really values um, anonymity and privacy, especially in payments. Uh, look, even in America, we think that, you know, uh, Big Brother's not, or some people think Big Brother's not watching. Well, it was so bad uh, as far as like with Facebook, uh, they shot down that uh, Libra project uh, in a heartbeat because they said, you can't, you can't even deal with our, our, our private information. And now you want our business or our, our current uh, monetary transactions? You are out of your mind, son. So lastly, meanwhile, it is necessary to guard against the misuse of ECNY in illegal and criminal activities, such as telefraud, internet gambling, money laundering, and tax evasion by making sure that transactions comply with blah, blah, blah. Okay, so great. So it, it sounds pretty good. Uh, on half of this stuff. The other half is just, I think, nonsense. Let me know what you think in the comment section. And let's break down to the last part, the second to last part of what Brad Garlinghouse said at the Economic Club of New York a couple of years ago. Listen to this and tell me if this doesn't make a heck of a lot of sense as far as the digital dollar. Take a listen. Because I want to transition, particularly for this audience at the Economic Club of New York, uh, China, and other countries, but specifically China. China has completed a prototype, I don't know if you all know this, a prototype of a so-called China coin, a digital currency, I believe it's backed by the Yuan. It is. And they are about to unleash their own network, similar to you know what we're talking about here. Are we behind in that here in America? I mean, the Fed is a skeptic when it comes to cryptocurrency. Yeah. The president is a skeptic. Uh, you have a lot of people who still don't quite understand it. You know, Singapore, which is considered a financial center of the world, very forward thinking when it comes to technology. That central banker has expressed a little bit of concern. Yeah. So let's let's first understand like what stable coins are kind of uh, central bank digital assets is kind of the, the, the way they're described. And so what the, the Chinese government is doing is that they are uh, apparently going to launch a central bank digital asset. Uh, I let's go back to the thing I said about Starbucks earlier. What problem are we solving? So uh, I look at the Fed today, and I'm sure there are bankers here in the window or, or in the audience. And if you want to go and call on the Fed for liquidity, you go to the Fed window. You don't get cash. You get digits in a ledger. Mm -hmm. And so when you know I'm J.P. Morgan, and I go to the Fed. The Fed's saying, "Okay, great. Here, here's some sort of ledger change. It's already digitized." So I've actually been a little bit of a skeptic that central bank digital assets do much that we don't already do today. So you don't think the dollar should be tokenized? It already is. You think about it, like how many people here, like you look at your net worth statement on a bank account and like those are just digits. You know, it, yes, you could go to the bank and get 
cash. But frankly, if you're asking for any more than a few thousand dollars, you have to call in advance because they don't have the cash. So most of your, most of the U.S. dollar is, quote, I mean, you said tokenized, I would say digitized. There is a little bit of a dif difference, but I think we always have to go back to what problem are we trying to solve? Mm -hmm. If we're solving a problem or creating customer value, then I think it's great. The, the only argument I have seen around central bank digital assets is if they want to expand the Fed window from serving a small number of regulated institutions to a mass audience. If everybody here could go directly to the Fed and have an account with the Fed, well, that's kind of interesting. Now we just put the entire commercial banking business out of business. That doesn't sound like a very good that, idea. I'm feeling the room shivering. <laughs> uh, so he's, he's talking to a bunch of bankers right there. And this is what I'm talking about as far as the only thing that changes is the wallet. So if just like what Brad talked about, you know, if you want to have that happen, sure. But what's the point of the banks? Because that's the whole that's the whole point of a JP Morgan. That's the whole point of a Chase or a Wells Fargo is so, so we can store it there. But if we're just going to open the window ourselves and you're going to give us a digital wallet, first of all, who's going to create that digital wallet? Is the U.S. government? Are they going to innovate or regulate? So that means that they're going to have to create this digital wallet. And then what happens if that wallet goes down? Who are you going to call? You're going to call the 1-800 U.S. government? <laughs> I, I, just, I, I just don't get it. So when you take a look at that, you're like, okay, that kind of makes sense. But then what really makes sense, though, is like we talked about before with the, the digital yuan. So what, Ch what China does is they didn't change too much, but they changed the wallet. Now the wallet is the government, even though they would say that, oh, no, 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 we, we have the, these, these private banks and everything else, which I, I think will still be in play. They'll still have that for loans or whatever else. But as far as like that wallet, well, the wallet's owned by the government. We don't like how you just protested. We don't like what you said in social media. We don't like how you walked across the street. Guess what? We're shutting down your wallet. So good luck uh, getting any money. And then that's just how it goes. That is a frightening scenario. And I'm just not uh, too keen on that. Um, so that's what we have. So anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And let's uh, finish up to our last piece here. Crazy for crypto is my man, Digital Dave, who has been great. He's, he's called a lot of winners. I've listened to him for, gosh, over two years now. And I also got Guy from Coin Bureau, and we're going to do a price predictions video. And uh, that'll be on Tuesday the 20th at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. I don't know what it is wherever you're at, but uh, that's that's what it is because Dave's in Thailand and, and uh, Guy is over in uh, UK or Great Better, whatever, wherever he's at. And uh, so we have a little bit of a, of a conflict. So Guy... Uh, I don't think he's going to be able to make it. If he doesn't, uh, he's going to do a pre-recorded thing for us to talk about the price predictions. Dave should be good, and uh, that is it. So, uh, one real, th one quick real note is that we're not doing this on this channel on Digital Asset News. We're doing it on Digital Asset News clips because over there, there's something that happens when I do live streams on this channel. It just kind of just messes up with the whole algorithm. So I like to do them over there and keep things over there. I like to separate and organize. And that's what I'm gonna do for all the live streams from now on is stick them over there. Unless it's some huge, huge announcement, like then I'll just go live real quick, but it'll be over on Dan Clips. The link is in the description. Uh, you can go over there and follow us. And uh, we do a lot of different things as far as advancements in crypto and stuff like that. So anyhow, look, that one a little bit long. It is Sunday. So what else? You know, it's, it's a rest day. So uh, hopefully you say, made all the way to the end. I appreciate it. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, a like, consider subscribing. And uh, uh, that is it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. Appreciate it. See you on the next one.